In the 1730s, explorers pushing through the Carolina swamps encountered something impossible. Families living deep in the wilderness, speaking English, perfect English, Elizabethan English, the language of Shakespeare, of the old world, of a time that should have been lost to history. But these weren't English colonists. They had dark skin, high cheekbones, and names that didn't appear in any colonial registry. They lived between worlds, too European to be native, too native to be European, speaking a language that had no business existing in that place. At that time, in those mouths, one observer wrote, they spoke English like Elizabeth's tongue, not like our own. How did English families end up 150 miles inland, living in swamp communities, speaking a dialect from the 1500s? The answer, if it's true, would solve one of America's oldest mysteries, the disappearance of the lost colony of Roanoke. In 1587, 117 English colonists vanished from Roanoke Island. Three years later, they were gone. No bodies, no massacre, just one word carved into a post. Croatoan. What if they survived? What if they didn't disappear? They transformed. What if their descendants are still here, carrying the lost colony gene in their DNA? The Lumbee people of Robeson County, North Carolina, have claimed for generations they descend from the Roanoke colonists, that their ancestors fled inland, married into native tribes, and created a new identity in the swamps. Historians dismissed it as folklore, until scientists extracted DNA from Lumbee families, and what they found was impossible to ignore. European genes from the 1500s, Native American lineages from Carolina coastal tribes, African ancestry from early colonial contact, all of it, mixed in combinations that shouldn't exist, unless the lost colony really did survive. This is the story of the lost colony gene, and it's stranger than any legend. Who were these people? And why did they confuse everyone who met them? Throughout the 18th and 19th centuries, settlers moving through the swamps of Robeson County kept encountering families who didn't fit any category. They spoke sophisticated English with archaic vocabulary that sounded like it came from another century. They had English surnames, Locklear, Lowry, Oxendine, Chavis, Brooks, names from early colonial records attached to people who looked nothing like typical English colonists. Their physical appearance confused observers. Some had light skin and European features. Others had dark skin and native features. Most were somewhere between. Families showed extraordinary variation. Siblings who looked like they came from different continents. They practiced Christianity, but retained native cultural elements. They lived in tight-knit communities centered on the Lumber River's swampy tributaries. The land was marginal, flood-prone, isolated, but that isolation protected them because legally they didn't exist. Census takers didn't know what to write. Different censuses recorded the same families as free people of color, mulatto, Indian, other. The 1835 North Carolina Constitution stripped voting rights from all free persons of color. The Lumbee lost the right to vote, serve on juries, or attend white schools, so they retreated deeper into the swamps, into land no one else wanted, and they maintained their distinct identity through oral traditions, traditions that claimed an origin older and stranger than anyone outside believed. One tradition was the story of the lost colony. Lumbee elders told of ancestors who came from the old people by the water, English people who fled inland when something went wrong, who married into native tribes for survival, who taught their children English, and Christian prayers, while adopting native ways for centuries. These stories were dismissed as fantasy, until modern genetics made it possible to test. What really happened to the 117 English colonists who vanished from Roanoke? In 1587, Sir Walter Raleigh sponsored England's attempt at a permanent American colony. 117 people landed on Roanoke Island. The colony was led by John White. His daughter Eleanor gave birth to Virginia Dare, the first English child born in the Americas, but supplies ran low. Relations with native groups deteriorated. In 1587, John White sailed back to England for provisions. He couldn't return for three years. England was at war with Spain. By the time White made it back in 1590, the colony was deserted. No bodies, no signs of struggle. The houses had been dismantled carefully, and carved into a post was Croatoan. Croatoan was a nearby island, and the name of a native tribe allied with the English. Before leaving, White had arranged that if the colonists relocated, they would carve their destination. If in distress, they'd carve a cross. There was no cross. White tried to search Croatoan Island, but storms forced his ship back to England. He never returned. And for over 400 years, the lost colony's fate remained unsolved. But there was another theory. By the early 1700s, English explorers in Carolina's interior were reporting something strange. Tribal communities with lighter-skinned people, native groups speaking English phrases, families with English surnames, living among the Tuscarora and Catawba, John Lawson, exploring inland North Carolina in 1701, met native groups with gray eyes. They claimed descent from white people who came from the coast generations earlier. 
What if the Roanoke colonists, realizing their settlement was untenable, had moved inland? What if they'd been adopted by coastal tribes? What if they'd intermarried, creating mixed communities that preserved English language fragments while becoming primarily native in culture? And what if those communities concentrated in the swamps around the Lumber River, becoming the Lumbee? The Lumbee claimed this origin. They preserved Elizabethan era surnames from Roanoke colony records. Some families claimed descent from specific colonists, but proof was impossible, until DNA. What does it mean to exist in a world that has no category for you? By the early 1800s, the Lumbee community had developed a distinct identity, shaped by isolation and legal persecution. They numbered several thousand, concentrated along the Lumber River. The land was poor, swampy, flood-prone, but defensible, easy to disappear into. They maintained tight kinship networks. Families intermarried within the community. They were literate, unusual for frontier populations. They ran their own churches and schools. When laws allowed, but the laws increasingly didn't allow. The 1835 constitution stripped their voting rights. Census classification shifted unpredictably. They couldn't buy land in many areas. When the Civil War came, they were conscripted into Confederate labor battalions, but denied soldier status. This legal ambiguity created a community that fiercely protected its distinctiveness. They resisted every attempt to categorize them as simply mixed or colored. They were their own people, with their own identity, descended from English colonists, native tribes, and African ancestors who had converged in these swamps centuries earlier, and when they fought back, their resistance became legend. What happens when a people refuse to disappear? In 1864, Confederate authorities forced Lumbee men into brutal labor battalions. When Alan Lowry and his sons resisted, Alan and his son William were executed. This ignited a rebellion. Henry Barry Lowry, Alan's youngest son, became a guerrilla fighter. For seven years, he led a band raiding plantations, freeing laborers, and distributing supplies to poor Lumbee families. They ambushed militia units and disappeared into swamps where no outsider could follow. Henry Barry Lowry became a folk hero. To the Lumbee, he was Robin Hood. To white authorities, a dangerous outlaw. They never caught him. In 1872, he vanished. Lumbee tradition says he was never captured and lived out his life in secret. The Lowry War cemented Lumbee identity as a people who would not submit but legal recognition remained elusive. Throughout the late 19th and early 20th centuries, they fought for official acknowledgement. In 1885, they became Croatan Indians. In 1911, Cherokee Indians of Robeson County. In 1913, Indians of Robeson County. Finally, in 1953, they chose their own name, Lumbee. In 1956, Congress passed the Lumbee Act, recognizing them as a tribe, but denying federal benefits, recognition without recognition, the fight for full federal recognition continues. The Lumbee number over 55,000, the largest tribe east of the Mississippi, but they remain in legal limbo. And one of their strongest pieces of evidence? DNA. What happens when science tests a legend? In the early 2000s, genetic studies began analyzing Lumbee DNA using Y-chromosome markers, mitochondrial DNA, and autosomal DNA. Projects at the University of North Carolina and the Genographic Project collected samples from Lumbee volunteers. The results were extraordinary. First, Y-DNA, the paternal lines. The most common haplogroup is R1B, which is dominant in British Isles populations. Many Lumbee paternal lineages trace to English or Scottish men who arrived during the 1600s. The timing and geography fit perfectly with the lost colony scenario. Next, mitochondrial DNA, the maternal lines. The most common haplogroups are Native American, specifically A and C. These are found in indigenous populations along the Carolina coast. This indicates Lumbee maternal lineages traced to Native women from tribes like the Croatoan, Pamlico, or Tuscarora, tribes where the lost colony would have fled. Then there is African ancestry. Autosomal DNA shows approximately 10 to 20% African ancestry. This traces to African Americans who intermarried with Lumbee families during the 18th and 19th centuries. The genetic signature is exactly what you'd expect if the lost colony theory were true. European men from the late 1500s integrating with native coastal tribes with later African American admixture. Researchers called it a living genetic palimpsest. Successive layers of ancestry written over each other, but remaining detectable. The genetic diversity and mixture patterns date to the early colonial period, precisely when the lost colony disappeared. The math and the myth converge. The DNA supports the legend, but does it prove it? And what does it mean for Lumbee identity? Can genetics solve a mystery of identity, or does it create new ones? The DNA evidence is clear. The Lumbee carry genetic contributions from European colonists, native tribes, and African populations, with mixing dating to the early colonial period, but the Lumbee 
aren't purely lost, lost colony descendants. They're descended from multiple English colonists, multiple native tribes, and multiple African lineages, all converging over several centuries. Some families show strong European paternal lines, consistent with lost colony ancestry. Others show Native American paternal lines. Still others show complex patterns, defying simple categorization. The lost colony connection is likely real for some families, but it's not the whole story. The Lumbee are a Creole people, formed through convergence of multiple ancestries. For many Lumbee, the genetic complexity validates rather than diminishes their history because their identity was never about purity, it was about survival, about creating something new from the collision of worlds. Lumbee activists have embraced the genetic evidence in their fight for federal recognition. DNA supports their claim to Native American ancestry and a distinct historical origin, but there's also skepticism. Some worry that reducing identity to genetics misses the point, that culture, tradition, and community matter more than haplogroups and percentages. One Lumbee elder said, DNA tells you where you came from. It doesn't tell you who you are. When there's no single origin, does it make your story smaller or infinitely larger? For the Lumbee, larger. Their story isn't about one group surviving. It's about multiple peoples converging, mixing, adapting, and creating a new identity that persists for over 400 years. The lost colony gene is real, but it's just one thread in a genetic tapestry, including indigenous Americans who lived here for thousands of years. Africans who survived slavery, and Europeans who fled when their colonial project failed. All of them are ancestors. All contributed to the people who call themselves Lumbee today. What does DNA reveal about survival, identity, and the meaning of ancestry? The Lumbee genome is a record of collision and adaptation, of peoples meeting in ways that created something entirely new. When English colonists landed on Roanoke in 1587, they entered a world already inhabited. Native tribes had lived here for thousands of years. When those colonists likely fled inland, they would have needed native help to survive. Integration would have been survival. English men marrying native women, children born who were both and neither, over generations. These mixed communities evolved their own identity, neither fully English nor fully native, something new. When African Americans sought refuge in the same swamps during the 18th and 19th centuries, they too integrated, adding another layer of ancestry, culture, and resilience. The result is the Lumbee, a people who exist because of mixture, because isolation in the swamps allowed them to maintain distinctiveness. While the outside world tried to categorize and control them, their DNA remembers all of it. European haplogroups from 16th century England, native lineages from Carolina, tribes, African ancestry from the colonial south, all woven together in combinations, telling a story of survival against impossible odds. The Lumbee today are over 55,000 people, maintaining cultural traditions, speaking a distinct dialect with archaic features, and continuing to fight for recognition. They are living proof that identity is not singular, that purity is a myth, that the most resilient peoples are those who adapt, who mix, who refuse to be erased. Perhaps the lost colony was never lost at all, only transformed, its children hidden in the reeds, its language carried on the wind, its genes flowing through generations that found new ways to be human. Survival isn't about maintaining purity, it's about adaptation, about becoming something new, while remembering what you were. The Lumbi remember, their genes remember, and their story challenges every simple narrative about race, identity, and American history. So what did we learn from the lost colony gene? That the Roanoke colonists didn't simply disappear. That some survived by integrating with native tribes. That their descendants are still here, carrying European, Native American, and African ancestry in combinations that tell a story of adaptation. That the Lumbee people are not a historical footnote, but a living continuation. That their oral traditions, dismissed for centuries as fantasy, are supported by genetic evidence tracing back to the exact time and place where the lost colony vanished. That identity is not about purity, but about complexity about embracing multiple ancestries and creating something new from collision and mixture. The lost colony mystery isn't fully solved. We don't know exactly what happened in 1587. We don't know which specific colonists integrated with which tribes. We don't know if Virginia Dare survived to have children whose descendants might live in Robeson County today. But we know this. The Lumbee exist. Their DNA proves they carry ancestry from English colonists, Carolina native tribes, and African populations, all mixed in the early colonial period. They are a people who shouldn't exist according to rigid racial categories. But they do, and their existence challenges those categories. The lost colony gene is real, and it's still being passed down, generation after generation, in a community that refused to disappear. Perhaps that's the real mystery, not where the colonists went, but how their descendants survived everything that tried to erase them. The answer is written in DNA, in oral tradition, in surnames echoing across centuries, in a language that sounds like Shakespeare in the swamps of North Carolina. The lost colony didn't vanish. It transformed. 
and it's still here. If this story changed how you see American history and the complexity of identity, hit subscribe. We're exploring more genetic mysteries that reveal hidden truths about who we are. Drop a comment. Did you know about the Lumbee and the lost colony connection? Have you discovered unexpected ancestry through DNA testing? What does identity mean? When genetics reveals complexity, share this video with anyone fascinated by unsolved historical mysteries, genetic ancestry, or the idea that entire peoples can survive by transforming. The lost colony gene is real, and its story is still being written by the Lumbee people today. Thanks for watching, and stay curious.